Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from the gospel according to John, chapter 1, beginning with verse 35. And this particular story follows right after Jesus had been baptized by John the Baptist. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and they saw where he was staying and spent that day with him. It was about the tenth hour. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who had heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John, you will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks, Will you pray with me? Our Lord, our God, penetrate us with that excitement, that generational excitement. We have found the Messiah. Help us to hear these words, to hear these stories in a way that will generate that excitement and that we too will know how we might share our story as prayers like angels, as words of comfort, of words of invitation. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So when the boys were younger, we used to watch a lot of Discovery Channel and National Geographic and Animal Planet and channels like that. The boys were really into all those sciencey things and the shows that they would have about pulling things apart and blowing them up and putting them back together. So if you were a fan of any of these networks, then you likely have seen an episode or two of Dirty Jobs. Mike Rowe and that iconic voice going out and performing tasks that most of us would not want to do. But we would see week after week Mike Rowe going out there with a worker or a team of workers doing some of the most difficult or strange or yucky, messy occupations that are out there, along the likes of roadkill collector or hoof trimmer or even drain cleaner, and there were worse. At the end of each show, Mike would ask the viewers to continue to send in their suggestions about the dirty jobs that could be featured on future episodes. I'm wondering how many people may have suggested evangelist as one of the dirty jobs. Evangelist. When I say the word, I wonder what kind of images are conjured up even in your own minds. Evangelist. Do you have visions, like I do, of hippie types on the beach handing out tracts about the four spiritual laws? You probably don't even know what the four spiritual laws are. Or loud Sunday night preachers who seem to exclusively focus on a poor interpretation of revelation. 
Or do you see in front of you people standing on busy street corners with those new big yellow signs with the black words declaring that the end is near? Or maybe you have encountered evangelists on your own front porch or at the airport or at a ball game, which then reminds me of rainbow wigs and John 3.16. Given the cultural images of an evangelist, the job itself may seem daunting or even repulsive, like some of the jobs that Mike Rowe would feature on Dirty Jobs. But I wonder if an aggressive, in-your-face, pious delivery style is the only way to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Because that's what evangelism literally means, to share the good news. And the good news that we have is the good news about Jesus Christ. So when we say evangelist, we literally are saying to share the good news about Jesus Christ. So what if being an evangelist is not about being self-righteous or being pushy or being a religious know-it-all or standing on street corners quoting Bible verses or having pat answers or being particularly articulate about Christian doctrine. What if that isn't what evangelist means? What if we go back to what it actually means? Sharing good news. Sharing's a much broader word than just saying, talking, shouting, proclaiming. Sharing encompasses the words that we use but also the actions of our lives, the things that we are compelled to do, the examples that we have heard from, Judy sharing her story about an angel coming and praying for her, and then immediately learning about Jack having surgery, and Dennis goes over and lays hands on him and prays for him. That's sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And I suspect, because you're here today, at least at one point in your life, if not at many points in your life, you have been invited, you have experienced for yourself the good news about Jesus Christ. You have come to know for yourself in one or many experiences that God has not abandoned you that God has not abandoned all of us on earth. God has not wanted us to wallow in our free will or be mired in the sin like the psalmist talks about being mired in the mud. But instead, God has given us redemption through Jesus Christ. All along, God has been working through history to share his love and his mercy and his grace. And for us, that love and that mercy and that grace has been given to us, has been bestowed upon us through the person of Jesus Christ. At some point in our lives, we faced up to our sin. We confessed that sin. We received forgiveness for our sin. And we have been redeemed by God. And from that point, or from many points, our lives are transformed. 
And we are now the keepers of the good news. Good news that needs to be shared. Jesus and John the Baptist share the good news with their disciples, share the good news with their followers through relationship. They are in a conversation with the disciples. And Jesus asks them, what are you seeking? What are you looking for? What is it that you want to know? John and Jesus have their followers. John points out excitedly, there is the Lamb of God. And his followers turn towards Jesus and he asks them, what are you seeking? And that first generation of followers now are in relationship with Jesus Christ. They ask, where will you be? The actual translation is, where are you dwelling? Where are you aboding? Where can we find you? Not what hotel are you staying in? But where are you going to be that we can be with you? And he says, come and see, come and see. We all have a story to tell, a story that includes forgiveness through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And as followers of Jesus, we cannot, our faith cannot be understood outside or apart from Jesus. How we understand our own story in the midst of the larger story of God is what shapes us, what transforms us, what urges us, what makes us who we are. And our story about how we were invited to experience hope and peace and joy is also the invitation that we can give to others. Jesus' invitation was simple. Come and see. It's non-threatening, it's clear, and it invites us to be in relationship. It's something any one of us can say, come and see. And that invites us to see evangelism quite differently. It doesn't have to be intrusive or abrasive or unwelcoming. Evangelism is offering a simple and relational invitation to other people for them to come and see more than what culture has to offer. Even if we feel like we struggle to name or understand or articulate our faith, even if we struggle to find ways to share faith with others, even in those times where we're not even sure what we believe, Jesus is still there. Jesus is still asking us what it is that we deeply need still inviting us to come and see. Jesus is still there binding himself to us, still determined to give us more than we can possibly imagine. Jesus simply does not give up on us ever. I remember the commercials long ago, Motel 6, we'll keep the lights on, right? No matter what situation you find yourself traveling on some desolate road, at least Motel 6 is going to keep the light on for us. Jesus is that light that is kept on for us. No matter the road that we are traveling on, God says, we'll keep the light on. 
Come and see. Be invited into relationship with Jesus Christ through relationship with one another. Amen.